I'm very pleased to be sitting here this morning with uh, Mr. Fred Tinker, one of the founders of the Rogers Organ Company, one of uh, several gentlemen that uh, created the initial Rogers Organ. And I am just so grateful for the opportunity to sit here with Mr. Tinker and just share a few minutes uh, about how this incredible company and incredible product uh, started uh, many years ago. Fred, it's a pleasure meeting you today. I thank you for taking the time to come and visit us here at uh, Rogers. We're honored by your presence. Well, thank you. We, I enjoy uh, coming back and seeing the old plant and seeing everything humming away. Well, it's very exciting to me just as we walk through the factory for you to meet some of the people that have been here for uh, many, many years. Certainly one of the very unique characteristics about Rogers is the uh, longevity of uh, employees. And uh, you and I just met Sally Woodruff, and uh, Sally has been here for uh, over 40 years. She's one of uh, seven people that have been here over 40 years. I think we have 13 people that have been here over 30 years, and uh, approximately half of our people have been here 20 years. And we think it's a real testimony to the unique character that this company has and the passion all of these people have for this wonderful instrument, the Rogers organ. You know, I'm sure that many of our dealers and dealers' salespeople would like to hear firsthand, how did this whole thing get started? Uh, as I understand, reading through uh, literature, uh, you were part of a local Beaverton company, uh, Tektronix, yes. and there was this uh, mm -hmm. initial effort to create this uh, musical instrument, uh, the organ, and if you'd just be so kind to share whatever uh, thoughts you may have about how did this whole thing get started? Well, <laughs> uh, some things go back really far. Uh, uh, the, uh, I knew very little about organs, and my church appointed me to a committee to select an organ because we had a pump organ that uh, we had been using. and. Uh, so, uh, since I was at Tektronics and an electrical engineer, uh, they felt that I should be the chairman of that committee. And, but not knowing very much about organs, I did know Rogers Jenkins, who I knew was familiar with organs and was an organ enthusiast. and. Uh, so I asked him to be our uh, uh, consultant on the purchase. So we looked at all the uh, available organs, the Baldwin and the um, Allen and uh, the Hammond, and uh, gradually I got more familiar with what, with what organs were. and. Uh, we, Rogers and I talked about, well, maybe we could build an organ for our church. And I, we decided that was a little too risky. What we built might not be what they wanted. And, and uh, so we chose one of the organs that was available uh, publicly. Uh, I guess I can say we bought a con. And... Uh, <clears throat> then, uh, sometime after that, uh, we had an economic turndown, and uh, Tektronix was having difficulty keeping all of its employees building, busy, and up to that time had never had any layoff or anything. And uh, so, they had a meeting uh, with all of the engineers and said, if any of you have any ideas for what the company could build to keep its employees build it, what, bu busy, why let us uh, know about it? And uh, um, 
So Rogers and I talked about it some, and uh, we had talked about organs from time to time. And so we went to Howard Ballum, the president, and said, well, we would be interested in uh, presenting organs as a product for Tektronics. And uh, he said, well, go ahead and uh, build, uh, write up a plan and do some preliminary research. And uh, uh, when you're ready, we'll present it to the board and see what their, their opinion is. And uh, so we built uh, uh, tone generators and amplifiers and speakers and a few things and ran some cost studies and uh, uh, went to uh, the board with our presentation. And by that time they were coming out of the recession. And uh, the board decided that it was too foreign a product for a, an electronics only company like Tektronics. And, um, <coughs> But Howard uh, Vaughn uh, told us that uh, uh, if we felt that there was an opportunity there, that they would uh, advise us and help us uh, form a corporation to start building organs. So the company that was started had no, no connection formally with Tektronics, only that we had uh, officers of Tektronics on our board and they were supplying directly or indirectly some of the financing for the start of the company. So this uh, initial company, this initial uh, product development, I guess you would say development of the initial prototype of mm -hmm. product, uh, where did that physically happen? Was that in a location outside of the Tektronics property or was it in your home? No, it was actually in the Tektronics labs. Uh, we uh, uh, would work over time, mostly uh, working on it, but we would also discuss uh, with the other engineers there what we were doing, get I getting ideas uh, uh, and resources. And uh, I... Uh, I suspect uh, that uh, uh, some of the work was done on Tektronix time. Okay. During these initial uh, times together, you and Rogers and whoever the outside people uh, may have been, uh, I assume there was some sort of discussion about uh, a design concept on this instrument, maybe compared to what was available in the marketplace uh, at the time? Were there specific uh, objectives or design concepts that you gentlemen came up with at the time uh, as you went forward with this initial uh, development? <coughs> well, of course, we, we felt it was important to have authentic voices as much as possible. And um, we um, uh, ha we had looked at these other organs, as, as I said, uh, and uh, we felt it was important to have independent generation of sound, and um, we thought that uh, there was an opportunity to use transistors uh, to generate that sound. And uh, at that time, transistors were not what you would call a real reliable product. <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, Texas Instruments had just come out with a radio or something with transistors. And so we looked at those transistors that TI had uh, used and uh, used them to make uh, tone generators. Um, people have uh, 
said that we copied this company or that company in the in our product um, uh, I suppose um, it would be true that we that our product in concept was probably most similar to the con organ and but um, the uh, our main um, claim to fame, I guess, was that we did it all with transistors. So really it was sort of uh, this breakthrough technology that was being developed at the time, this uh, transfer from uh, tube and uh, tube oscillators to transistorized uh, tone generation. I find it so interesting, you talk about uh, the design concept of this, of using uh, individual independent sources in the development of sound, because I think if we look back at that point in time, so many of the uh, systems had some sort of uh, dividing oscillator system where a certain frequency or pitch was just divided uh, into different uh, octaves, and there was uh, a lot of unification, I mean, from a technical pipe organ point of view in those products. So really what I hear you saying is you were trying to come up with a unique system that really had true independence of generating the ensemble of the organ. Yes. And what I find that so interesting, and you mentioned that you were primarily focusing on the sound of the organ. I find that so interesting because here we are 56 years later and sound is the heart of the Rogers story and it always has been. And more importantly, not just the sound of uh, individual stops, which many organs through the years have had wonderful individual stops, but I find it so interesting that here your initial design concept was this concept of independent oscillation, independent sound sources to create ensemble in the organ. And I find it interesting because I was, uh, at my age, all also familiar with the con organ, and certainly in its time, one of the unique characteristics of the con organ was its ensemble uh, versus the other products that were available in the uh, marketplace uh, at that time. Uh, did Rogers Jenkins play the organ at that time? Um, not. Uh, not professionally. He did play for his own enjoyment. Okay, so he was an organist. Mm -hmm. I know one of the uh, common uh, questions I get asked is uh, how did the name of the Rogers organ come about? And I'm just taking a guess that it must have been based on uh, Rogers first name. That's, that's correct. Uh, we I, I can still remember the discussion. I could almost see the room where we were talking about, well, what should we name this uh, product? And uh, um, we considered his name, and of course we considered my name, and we considered uh, names that were unique here to the Northwest, Willamette, uh, things like that. And um, we... Uh, we felt that we didn't want this to be a regional product, and uh, the name Rogers was much more appropriate for an organ than Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we've laughed about that several times internally. How about Tinker organ? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that, that reminds me, when I was in college, um, I uh, was doing a lab product and uh, project, and uh, the uh, professor came by and uh, he said, "Now, when you uh, hook this power to this, is that meter going to read up or down?" And I said, "I don't know." And he said, "Well, what are you going to do if it reads backwards?" And I said, "I'm going to switch the leads." And he said, Fred, you're either going to be an engineer or a tinker. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a great story. 
So here you are developing this uh, initial prototype, and I assume you know somewhere along this process, all of a sudden here is this uh, musical instrument that's actually starting to uh, sound as you play it. Uh, I'm thinking here, just as you speak, that certainly one of the challenges would have been how do you start selling this product? Uh, who do you sell it to? Uh, so. Uh, Somewhere in this development process, was there a formation of some sort of sales department uh, to try to uh, market this product, or did you have uh, certain connections that you knew in the music business that you went to these people uh, uh, initially? Well, we had some connections with organists, uh, or developed some with organists, through the uh, local American Guild of Organists and things like that. Um, but basically, we just set out to sell them directly ourselves. And uh, we would contact existing dealers and uh, ask them if they were interested in the product. And um, so we, uh, it took us a year to get the first fully functioning organ playing. And we had a local AGO uh, uh, leader uh, play a concert for us in our uh, factory. And um, I think that, you know, some dealers just came and looked and they said, well, we would like to add your product to our lineup. And so that's how it started. Uh, we sold we sold an organ the first year to a church in Eugene, Oregon, and uh, um, so that was our probably our first product, if I remember right, first first sale. And then we we sold several to dealers uh, to put on the floor. And just grew from there. Well, I find it very interesting that uh, certainly those instruments were unique for their sound quality when you look back at that uh, time frame. But I think another characteristic uh, from my perspective is uh, some of those initial models had uh, extraordinary console construction. In fact, if we go around the countryside today, we would still see a number of those original models from the uh, late 1950s, early 1960s uh, being played today. And the console construction is just remarkable in terms of its ability to survive uh, through the years. So you certainly spent uh, a lot of attention as well as on, uh, a lot of attention on construction details as well as the uh, Technology and sound uh, in the product a real tribute to the uh, to the company getting started I find another thing that's very interesting you talk about being involved with uh, American Guild of Organist members back there in the beginning of uh, Their being involved with the development process uh, That is something that we do on a very active uh, basis uh, yet today as we develop uh, new products, we'll pre uh, periodically bring in a very well-known organist for their critique, uh, their suggestions in terms of uh, how the, uh, the product uh, may be improved. Uh, I, I find a lot of similarities listening to you talk in terms of what you did starting the company and what the company still does today. And I think there's some very fundamental things, key issues that probably are a driving reason why the company has survived and is here today. Uh, and I think musical integrity of the product is really what we're talking about in general. You tell about your concern about the sound of the organ, the construction of the organ, the longevity of the investment, and certainly those are the uh, hallmarks of uh, what we do today. Mm -hmm. uh, it was interesting talking to you a few minutes ago about how our industry has uh, changed, mm -hmm. and certainly in the design of the product compared to your original Rogers organ, compared to today, it's a totally different market, 
primarily because of this tremendous difference in worship music styles today. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the common denominator mm -hmm. then and now is still this unique ability of the organ to lead the assembled in song in mm -hmm. praise of the one who makes it uh, all possible. And uh, I just mm -hmm. find it so amazing to have this opportunity to uh, sit uh, face to face with you and uh, learn about the uh, formation of this incredible company with this uh, incredible product. And on behalf of all of the Rogers dealers and thousands upon thousands of uh, Rogers organ owners, I just want to say thank you to you and to uh, Rogers Jenkins for your commitment to create this wonderful instrument, your passion for this instrument, and thank you very much for coming today. It's an absolute delight to spend this time with you. A pleasure to get to know you. Thank you very much. Thank you.